Imagine a day with no thoughts at all, no worries, no stress, no negative call, no anxiety of an email that's gone wrong, no worries to carry all day long. What if I told you you hold the key to control your thoughts, to let them be? You doubt it, I'm sure, it sounds so strange. I mean, a lifetime listening to your inner voice is hard to change. But think of hot water in the morning for your tea. You turn the thing off when you're ready. You see? And just like thoughts, you have control to turn them off, to regain your soul. Imagine you're in a park, green, so green, and your thoughts are like annoying dogs, if they were seen. And when you see those dogs, you move to a quiet place in the park, but it doesn't take any effort, right, to stop them bark. So may you recognize those dogs, knowing they're not you, so you can hear the silence, pure and true. Yesterday I was clever, so I wanted to change the world. Today I am wise, so I'm changing myself. It's a quote from Rumi. Imagine you could no longer hear thoughts throughout the day. No thoughts when you receive a bad email. No stress when something bad happens in your life. How great would it be if we only think when we want to? Because honestly, you don't like those negative feelings that come from those thoughts, do you? I mean, you would never choose to feel them if you only had the power to control them, right? What if I told you you can take control? Then you would be skeptical, right? Because for your whole life, you haven't been able to think only when you want to. What if you can? Like when you are turning on the water cooker in the morning to make your tea, that you can just turn it off when your tea is finished, that you can turn off thoughts when you no longer need it. Which brings me to another quote of Rumi. Silence is the language of God. All else is poor translation. So I'm not saying that thoughts would never arise again, although it could be a possibility. That's not what I mean. What I'm talking about is a state where if a thought arises, that it can go away effortlessly. I mean, not to meditate so you can get rid of them, but every time you have to meditate again and again to have some silence, some peace. You have to keep practicing and it takes effort. But for thoughts to disappear every time when they come without the feeling of effort, and you know what I mean with that. So not practices, because any practice requires a consistent dedication, a con consistent practice to get it removed, to make the thoughts disappear. What we're looking for is a effortless solution, timeless effortless solution so if you are too then keep watching by the way if you're new here I'm Jordan 23 years old did over 4 million dollars in revenue hired over 50 people and I started making videos on YouTube in 2012 but let us first look at why why do we want our minds to shut up well to answer that let's look at the consequences of not doing so of not shutting the mind up what will happen then well I guess you haven't been able to so look at your own life it's the best way to see for yourself what are the consequences or what has been the consequences for you and if we look at the consequences for the average mind then cravings is one of them for sure I mean many people are addicted many people aren't even aware they are addicted it can be anything I, I don't think I have to tell you there are so many in the world just look at obese people fast food addictions food cravings that lead to taking the action of actually eating the food which is all created by the mind all a consequence of not shutting up the mind so to say so aren't we the puppet of our master over here if i'm uh, honest i think that's true for me and almost anyone in the world and if you look at food cravings for example let's just look at that for instance the thought arises that says something like i want to eat chips after you have finished chips you can go back to work then you are productive you deserve it you've worked so hard they will taste so nice don't worry you've already trained or you will train tonight you are healthy you can take them and you eat them I mean many people do many people listen to the these cravings whatever it may be in this case chips and many people believe that it is they themselves who are saying this please think about that when you think about it then it doesn't really make sense right because you don't really want to you don't really want to eat the chips you don't really want to go to bed late right I mean I've never heard someone say yeah I want to eat chips whenever the thought arises so one of the consequences of the average mind is unwanted action and moreover lots of pain lots of conflict. I mean, in this example, one part is saying, I don't want to eat the chips, don't eat them. But the mind is telling you to do it and you do it. And therefore you feel pain afterward and there is conflict the whole time. So the one who really wants this to stop for once and for all, which is easier said than done, but not difficult. So the one who really wants this to stop, to only think when it is useful to that person, the question arises, how can I get there? So if that's you, let me ask you the following. Imagine you were sitting in a park working on your iPad or on your phone, laptop, whatever. And if you knew 
every time when you heard a thought that it was not you but a external monster maybe standing next to you that was talking to you and how easy would it be to stand up move away and sit on another bench in the park walking to that other bench in the park where you can hear nature's nature wouldn't be difficult it wouldn't feel like effort would it this is what i mean it is the very recognizing of this monster that it is standing next to you talking to you that will make it disappear without effort each time where you can go back to hearing the silence of the park. And to recognize this monster, we have to see that there are two things, you see? I assume so far you've always believed that it was you who was talking over here, right? You think you control that and you can. But when you think about it, often happens when you don't realize and when you do, when you don't want to. So you're not always in control. There are two things. Can you see this? Because if there was only one, then there wasn't conflict. Then there was not one part saying, don't eat the chips. And another part saying, yes, you should eat it. You deserve it. And then if you ask yourself, if I am not, this voice inside my head, then who am I? Then be aware that this question is more difficult to answer than the question, who am I not? And if I can say one thing that is absolutely true for myself, then it is this. The more I found out who I am not, the closer I got finding out who I am. The more clothes I leave behind, the more self-images I've seen through, the more false beliefs I discover. The closer I got to reality. And in reality, there is no thought is there don't believe me just listen right now listen what do you truly honestly hear if you start laughing then i'm with you may you hear it my friend by the way if you try to find the truth in a specific situation in your own life but you can't seem to find it then you can always email me the email is somewhere below and no i won't ask you for money but i only want serious people because we have already so many unserious people in the world and i have no interest in conversing with them so if you're serious you may check the show notes talk soon